Hi everyone. <clears throat> In this video, I will explain what is fractional part of a real number. What is this fractional part of a real number? Every real number can be expressed as sum of two things. One is an integer. Another one is a fractional part. Fractional part like 1 by 100, 2 by 1000, 3 by 10,000, like that. This fractional part is never negative. And it always lies between 0 and 1. It can be 0, but it is not at all 1. So, fractional part of a number always lies between 0 and 1 excluding 0 but not 1. For example, you take 2.5. So, this decimal number 2.5 can be expressed as two things. One is integer part. So, what is the integer part? That integer part is 2 plus remaining decimal part. Here decimal part is 0 0.5, right? So this is an integral part. This is known as integral part. Integral part of the number. Integral part. And this 0 0.5 is known as a fractional. 0 0.5 is known as a fractional part fractional part. So the fractional part of 2.5 is 0 0.5. Right. For integer, there is no fractional part. Like fractional part of 1 is 0. Fractional part of 2 is 0. If you take 3.54, now I can write 3 separating the integer plus Decimal part remaining one is 0 0.54 before the decimal point after the decimal point. So here this 3 is the integral part and this 0 0.54 is known as a fractional part of 3.54. This is a fractional part. of 3.4 of 3.54 what will happen if we give a negative real number what will happen if we give a negative real number as i said before that fractional part can never be negative and it is always lies between 0 and 1 excluding 1 so if i give minus 1.7 then how do I write this minus 1.7 as sum of integer plus some fraction which is not at all negative, which is not at all negative. So look here, I can write this as minus 2, okay, plus how much should I add to the minus 2 to get minus 1.7. So I have to add 0 0.3. So, minus 1.7 is expressed as minus 2 plus 0 0.3. This 0 0.3 is the fractional part. Fractional part of minus 1.7. This is known as a fractional part. Similarly, if you take uh, another example, minus 2.53, this I will write minus 3 plus 0 point, this is a 4, 7. So this is known as a fractional part. Now we can define what is fractional part of a real number. So as we have seen now with several examples that every real number can be expressed as two things. One is an integer. 
another one is a fraction f so here you see suppose x is a real number x is a real number okay such that x is expressed as x equal to some integer plus f some integer plus f where n is an integer and f is a fractional part f is a fractional part as I have discussed in the greatest integral part here, integral part of x, integral part of x, we take only integer that is n. This is the greatest integer function. Now what is fractional part of x? Fractional part of x. Fractional part of x is here it is an f it is an f fractional part of x is f denoted by denoted by there is one and only one notation x is enclosed by flower braces flower brackets or curled brackets so fractional part of x is denoted by x enclosed by two curled brackets or flower brackets. Therefore, therefore, that fractional part of x equal to, this is nothing but small f, okay. From this, what is small f? Small f equal to, we can write x minus n. But what is n? What is n? n is nothing but integral part of x. So this is nothing but x minus integral part of x. Uh, what do you call this is? This is integral part of x. Integral part of x. So therefore, we have defined that what is a fractional part of x. So fractional part of x equal to we subtract the integral part of x from the given real number. We subtract integral part of x from the given real number. Therefore, therefore fractional part of x now Therefore, y equal to fractional part of x equal to x minus integral part of x. This is the definition of fractional part of x, where that fractional part of x always lies between 0 and 1, including 0, excluding 1. It is never a negative. For example, Example 1. What is fractional part of uh, root 3? If I ask what is fractional part of root 3? Okay. Fractional part of root 3 is equal to according to the definition, according to the definition, you write root 3 minus integral part of root 3. So what is integral part of root 3? It is 1. So therefore fractional part of root 3 equal to root 3 minus 1. Don't write any finite value. Right? It, 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 in this decimal part, there is no end of digits. And there is no recurrence of digits. So it is an irrational number. It is non-recurring and non-ending decimal part. Similarly, if we ask what is the fractional part of pi, don't write pi equal to 3.14 and the fractional part is 0 0.14. You write that according to the definition, pi minus integral part of pi. This is equal to pi minus 3. This is the fractional part. Its value belongs to open 0 to 1. 
Similarly, if we ask what is fractional part of E, fractional part of E equal to approximate value of E is 2.718. You write E minus integral part of E, where integral part of E, that is the integer part of E, less than or equal to E. So E minus 2. Similarly, if we ask what is integral part of 1, you just write 1 minus integral part of 1, that is 1 minus 1 is 0. Anyway, there is no decimal part. So therefore, what we can write is fractional part of any integer is just 0. Fractional part of n equal to 0. Or you can say fractional part of x equal to 0 if x is an integer. x belongs to z. Right. Now, I am going to draw the graph of fractional part function. After that, I will discuss a few properties of this fractional part function. Here is the exact definition of a, a fractional part function. A function f maps from R2 closed 0 open 1 interval defined by f of x equal to x minus integral part of x. We subtract that integral part of x from the x. Then we call it fractional part of x. We represent it by x enclosed by two flower brackets. It is called fractional part function. Okay. In textbooks, they write that this curled brackets denotes fractional part of x. Otherwise, we do not consider that as a fractional part of x if we do not specify it. And uh, as we know that uh, integral part of x equal to n when x lies between two consecutive integers, we take only left integer. We take only left integer. Now, how do we draw the graph of this fractional part of x? It is very simple. If you know the graph of y equal to x, then we can draw the graph of y equal to fractional part of x. Graph of y equal to x is very simple. It passes through origin and making an angle 45 degrees with x-axis. So y equal to fractional part of x equal to x minus integral part of x. What will happen if x lies between 0 and 1? If x lies between 0 and 1. Right. What is integral part of x? What is integral part of x? We consider only left integer, right? So integral part of x is 0. So this is nothing but x minus 0. If x lies between 1 and 2, if x lies between 1 and 2, if we take any number between 1 and 2, what is its integral part? Its integral part is 1. So you see the de definition x minus integral part of x. So we write x minus 1. Similarly, if x lies between 2 and 3, if x lies between 2 and 3, what is its integral part? Integral part is 2. You always take that left integer. So its expression is x minus 2. Like that you take the negative side. If x lies between minus 1 and 0, right? Integral part of x is minus 1. So I can write that x minus of minus 1, nothing but x plus 1. If x lies between minus 2 and 0, you write x minus of minus 2. So this is equal to further I can write. If x lies between 0 and 1, 
integral fractional part of x is x between 0 and 1. And it is x minus 1 if x lies between 1 and 2. It is x minus 2 if x lies between 2 and 3. It is very simple if you understand the core definition of integral part of x and fractional part of x. And it is x plus 1 if x lies between minus 1 and 0. And it is x plus 2 if x lies between minus 2 and 0. Sorry, minus 2 and minus 1. If you observe, all these lines are parallel. Why all these lines are parallel? Because x coefficient in all these lines are same. Right. Y equal to, they are in the form of mx plus c. They are in the form of mx plus c. Well, now, how to draw the graph of this fractional part function? Simple. Okay. So, you see that, first I will draw that y equal to x line. I will draw the graph of y equal to x line. Okay. y equal to x passes through origin, makes an angle 45 degrees with positive x axis. All right. So, I will draw that line. Here, including 0, including 0. But excluding 1. But excluding 1. Up to here. Nice. So here, this is the fractional part of x. You will not get 1. Output of fractional part of x is never 1. Its value always lies between 0 and 1, including 0, but not 1. Now it makes an angle 45 degrees with positive x-axis and this is y equal to x line. Now we want to draw the y equal to x minus 1. What is x-intercept? x-intercept is 1. If you put y 0, then you will get x-intercept. And as all these lines are parallel, they make equal angles. They make an angle 45 degrees with positive x-axis. Well, so the next one is you start from you start from 1 you start from 1 like this you see start from 1 goes up to 1 only but it is not actually 1 and second one as it is you start from 2 and parallel to the previous line like this once you draw first two lines, you repeat the same pattern. You repeat the same pattern. Even for left side also, repeat the same pattern like this. This is y equal to x plus 1 line. Now you draw the y equal to x plus 2 line. y equal to x plus 2 line. The, all the lines are parallel to y equal to x. All the lines are parallel to y equal to x. This fractional part of x graph is very, very important. They play a very good role in entire calculus. In continuity, differentiability and uh, limits and um, minimum and maximum and definite integrals, etc. So, here we exclude that 1. That's why we keep the circle. Fractional part of x is never 1. This is a 1 unit height. Mm. This is the graph of fractional part of x. Now, I will write a few properties of this. Properties of fractional part function. A few properties I can discuss in this class. Those are all based on integral part of x. So once again, I will write that definition of fractional part of x. 
that fractional part of x equal to x minus integral part of x and further it is equal to x minus n if x lies between n and n plus 1 where n is an integer where n is an integer so when is that fractional part of x is 0 fractional part of x equal to to 0 if x is an integer if x is an integer there is no fractional part there is no decimal part if x is an integer fractional part of x belongs to closed 0 open 1 fractional part of x belongs to open 0, closed 1, sorry, open 1, if x is not an integer, if x is not an integer. Fifth property is very important, that fractional part of x plus k, where k is an integer k is an integer. Fractional part of x plus k equal to fractional part of x. You can bring out k if k is an integer. k belongs to z. Proof is quite simple. Proof. According to the definition of fractional part of x, we can write fractional part of x plus k equal to, okay, x plus k minus integral part of x plus k. As k is integer, we can bring out k from that integral part of x. So, this I can write x plus k minus integral part of x minus k. Now, k is cancelled. We got x minus integral part of x. So, this is nothing but fractional part of x. So, fractional part of x plus k is nothing but fractional part of x. Remember, this property is very, very important. I will give you an example based on this fractional part of x plus k equal to fractional part of x. Oh, sorry. This is a fractional part of x. There is no k. Right? One example. For example, what is fractional part of x plus k? by, for example, you take 20, 24, where k is running from 0 to 2023. 20, what is the expression of this summation? Sigma k equal to 0 to 2023, 20, fractional part of x plus k, whole by 2024. Well, this is quite simple. We can use that property 5 fractional part of x plus k equal to fractional part of x. So, here I will write that 1 by 2024 20, out and then sigma k equal to 0 to 2024. 20, okay. So, this fractional part of x plus k, I can write fractional part of x. Now, this fractional part of x is not at all depending upon k, right? That you can think of as constant. Well, so, you write that fractional part of x bring out of the summation because it is not at all depending upon k. And then sigma 
k equal to 0 to 20, 20, sorry, this is up to 2023. 20, you write 1. So we have to add 1 how many times? 20, 24 times. So this is equal to fractional part of x by 2024 into 2024 that we got fractional part of x finished so if you know the simple properties of greatest integer function and fractional part of function then we can solve the questions and uh, i won't uh, means I won't teach much and deeper properties in this class. Fractional part of minus 6 equal to, what is fractional part of minus 6? That fractional part of minus x equal to, according to the definition, minus x minus integral part of minus 6. If you can remember the Definition, not definition, that how to write integral part of minus x. If x is an integer, there is nothing to write, right? So I can write minus x minus of minus x if x is an integer. If x belongs to z. When x is an integer, then integral part of minus x is minus x. What will happen if x is not an integer other than integer other than integer then integral part of minus x is nothing but minus 1 minus integral part of x if you listen that previous class greatest integer function class 2 right properties of greatest integer function then you can understand fractional part of minus x so further, I can write, you see that this x, x will be cancelled. So fractional part of minus x is 0 if x is integer. There is no fractional part. And here you see that minus x plus 1 and plus integral part of x. If x is a not an integer. Alright, so further I can write this is equal to integral part of fractional part of minus x is 0 if x is integer. You see here this is minus x plus integral part of x nothing but 1 if you take negative common then you will get 1 minus fractional part of x. This is if x is not an integer. So roughly I will draw this uh, fractional part of minus x graph. Okay. Fractional part of minus x graph. All right. Well. So if you can remember that fractional part of x graph. They are, they, they are inclined towards positive x-axis, right? right? Making equal angle 45 degrees with the x and y-axis. Now this time, you see, like this. If this is 1, sorry, and this is 1, and this is 2, and this is 3, and this is minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3 and this is 1. Now how do we draw that fractional part of x uh, minus x graph like this. Here it is not included but it is included. Alright. Uh, one circle here like this. Height is 1 unit of course not 1 is not included. Well, here. Like this. 
this is the graph of fractional part of minus x. Okay. Here you see that fractional part of minus x, fractional part of minus x equal to use this definition. If x lies between 0 and 1, what is fractional part of x? Fractional part of x is only x. So the graph is y equal to 1 minus x. So one y equal to 1 minus x makes an angle 135 degrees with positive x axis and having x intercept 1 unit. Having x intercept 1 unit. Between 1 and 2 between 1 and 2, right? You will get 2 minus x. These all lines are parallel, are parallel between minus 1 and 0. You will get simply x minus x, like this. So you will get the lines y equal to minus x, 1 minus x, 2 minus x, 3 minus x, etc. Simply you can say that y equal to fractional part of minus x equal to it is n minus x n minus x right where x lies between <clears throat> x lies between you see if x lies between 0 to 1 then it is a 1 minus x right like this so I can write that n plus 1 to n. Let me verify it. If you take n equal to 0, if you take n equal to 0, okay, I'll verify it. You verify it here. X lies between n minus 1 to n. If n is 0, if n is 0, you will get y equal to minus x between minus 1 and 0. If n is 1, you will get 1 minus x between 0 and 1. So, you must know how to draw the lines of y equal to mx plus c. So, in the next class, I will discuss deeper properties of fractional part of x and then I will solve a few questions of previous j main. Thank you. Watch the video, subscribe the video, my channel. Thank you very much.